today I decided to make this tutorial video that will show you how you can create an external wallet that can host Coval tokens, circuit of value tokens, later on how you can transfer these tokens from the exchange to the external wallet and from the external wallet back to the exchange. Now I should say that the purpose of this video is not to familiarize you with Coval, it sort of assumes that you already know what Coval is and why more and more people, including me, think this is an extraordinary project with a huge potential and it will definitely be a game changer once they, uh, they publish the first release. So, nonetheless, in case you want to find more about Koval, then please check the links I've added to the description and as a must, you have to join the Telegram group circuits of value to get the pulse of, uh, of the community. It's uh, such a great community, uh, a lot of uh, active members in there. You can ask pretty much anything and they will give you an answer in a timely fashion. And what I really like the most is that you can, uh, you can ask even the, the founders or the developers questions and they will answer within a day. And that's a big thumbs up from 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 my side so getting back to the to the subject in hand uh, i want to discuss a bit about why would anyone want to move their coval tokens from uh, from uh, the exchange to an external wallet or any other digital assets on that matter so i've searched a bit on the internet and i've noticed that uh, there are a bunch of fears that surround uh, keeping assets on uh, on exchanges. The first one would be people are afraid of uh, the listing, that their their coin might be delisted. And uh, I've I've managed to found an article regarding Koval. It's a bit outdated from from a year ago, and it ends up with this statement with with rules for tokens becoming more strict if it gets delisted you could lose everything and this is simply not true i won't go into details why i strongly believe that bitrix won't delist this token i'm positive that they also recognize its potential and they also know about the hard work that is going behind the scenes but nonetheless let's uh, let's go with their their fear their worst case scenario uh, if it were to delist it, you don't have to lose everything. In fact, you don't have to lose anything. You can just move your tokens from the exchange to the external wallet. Okay, moving on. People are also afraid that the exchange or the account they have might be shut down or suspended or that the exchange or the account might be hacked. Regardless, uh, these fears uh, surround the exchange and as a consequence you couldn't access temporarily or permanently your your assets in there moving on another factor exchanges have know your customer procedure and offer one account per individual whereas external wallets are not nominal and you can have multiple wallets this is sort of a plus uh, considering damage control so in case you invest let's say a thousand dollars you don't have to put all your assets into one place. You can create multiple accounts and in case you forgot one password or it gets stolen or something happens, then you would still, uh, you would still uh, be able to access the, the other accounts that you have. Okay, moving on. If you don't have an exchange account at all, then you could ask a friend. Uh, exactly, for example, you don't have to create, uh, to create a, a new account on Bittrex. If you know somebody that already, already has an account, you can just ask him, hey, uh, I'm really interested, I would like to purchase some uh, Koval tokens, I don't have an account, uh, can I send you some Bitcoin and can you purchase them for me? I will send you the, the external wallet address and you can send, uh, send the tokens uh, to that one. The next one uh, was sort of uh, my main factor. Keeping the tokens farther away from uh, from an exchange reduces the impulse for day trading. I know I'm not a good day trader and I know I research Koval and Circuits of Value project very well and I knew from the start when I purchased the tokens that they're going to be long term but regardless when the market has uh, swinged from uh, one side to, to another 
at some points I couldn't resist the temptation to buy or sell and uh, most of the times I, I lost uh, I lost money on that so by moving uh, by moving the tokens to an external exchange to an external uh, wallet I'm more than one click away from uh, from day trading them and that turned out really well for me okay and last uh, this is more of a gut feeling people are more comfortable knowing that uh, the tokens they have are kept in a wallet rather than uh, than on exchanges so yes these are some of the of the factors i wanted to to present now we can move on to actually to part two which will be creating the, the external wallet so in order to create the wallet you can go on google and search counter wallet it will prompt up this page counterwallet.io and here you have two options now whichever you click it will lead uh, to the same uh, to the same page basically i think there th these are two 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 application hosted by different parties but they both access the same uh, the same data within the blockchain uh, i i always click the first one i tested with the second one and it worked as well so for now we'll go with the first one with counterparty Right now it says if you, uh, you that you need to log on into your wallet and enter your 12 word password. Uh, we don't have a wallet, so we're gonna create a new one, push create new one, and right now it j automatically generates a password for you. And you can just click and generate another password. So what I'm gonna do now is take this window aside so that the password cannot be seen. I'm gonna click this generator and I'm gonna save the password okay I've copied it I checked that I have written down or otherwise securely store my passphrase and continue and skip this step okay now they said the wallet is ready so what I'm gonna do now I'm just gonna input the password that I saved Let me just copy the password again, okay, and add it here. Okay, now open wallet. Okay, license, agree license agreement, I suggest you read it, then accept the terms. Do not remember the password. Okay, so this is how the basic wallet, external wallet looks like after, right after you created it. So right now you can see you have this address and this address can be used for sending uh, counterparty uh, compliant tokens. Basically, you can send uh, Bitcoin, you can send XCP, and you can send Koval. So that's exactly what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna move to part three, transferring Koval tokens from the exchange to, to the wallet. So click on it, copy the address, move on to the bitrex page right now i have left here some uh, some covers that i want to transfer so we're going to input that address and let's say that we want to transfer i don't know a thousand covers let's put here something easier so we can recognize it and as a fee bitrex takes 200 from from this amount so this will be the total withdrawal sum okay it asks for the two-factor authentication and this okay so right now I have uh, submitted the withdrawal uh, the Koval tokens will be sent there but I will send also a small amount of Bitcoin why uh, why would I want to do that well because when uh, when you you withdraw something from bitrex it uh, takes the fee from exactly that token but when you would want to transfer the coval tokens from uh, from the wallet from the external wallet they would take the fee from uh, from your bitcoin address so you need to have a small uh, a small amount of of bitcoin in there as well so let's try and withdraw some bitcoin the address will be the same quantity 
I don't know, something small. You, you, usually to withdraw something from the external wallet is like one or two dollars. So let's see, point to BTC, how much that is. Yeah, this should be more than enough for multiple withdrawals. So, okay. Okay, I think they want to withdraw more. Verify the quantity is less than and that you have sufficient balance. Yeah, I've added an extra zero. So, okay. Okay, so right now we have submitted both uh, both withdrawals for BTC and Koval. Right now we're gonna have to wait, and we'll resume uh, we we'll resume this uh, this clip once we have them in here. Okay, we have resumed. So I waited around 15 to 20 minutes for the withdrawal transaction to go through. Just as a tip, if you if you make a withdrawal and you wanna see the status. You can look here in uh, Bittrex at withdrawal history or in pending withdrawals and it gives you a transaction ID and you can take these transaction IDs and check them in uh, blockchain.com. So as you can see I got confirmations for both of the withdrawals and if we look in the wallet we see that we have received the 0 0.0025 uh, bitcoins and also the 1000 kovals. Now what I've done uh, uh, in the meantime is I already uh, sent back 500 covals to uh, to the Bitrex uh, to the Bitrex address. That's why you see here in uh, in this parenthesis the the 500 sum and this uh, pending action uh, animation. So how I did that basically we're moving to part four how you can send uh, tokens from the external wallet back to to the exchange okay you click send here it says enter Bitcoin address but here a big big exc exclamation mark be very careful so just to recap a bit when you send money from Bitrex to uh, the counter wallet you've sent them to the same address and the counter wallet knew uh, knew with which type of coin you you send and then store them into BTC and into Koval but when you're gonna send them back you want to send uh, you want to send each token to its specific Bitrex address so even if it says here enter Bitcoin address you should go in Bitrex and go into the circuits of value and copy the circuits of value address again do not copy the bitcoin address because if you try and send the uh, covals to bitcoin you will uh, you will lose them uh, i never tried it so i i recommend you don't uh, don't do it either so once again we're opening the circuits of value copying the address going back to the wallet entering the destination address and selecting the quantity here you can send the maximum let's not send the maximum send like 222 uh, it isn't necessary to send the memo and now the bitcoin fee well it depends how fast you want this transaction to go through uh, and you can see here the fee and the estimated weight uh, we're not in a rush right now so i'm going for the for the minimal amount and as you can see, it's uh, two, two cents. And it, this is regardless of the sum. So if we're trying to send one coval or we're trying to send the maximum amount, it's, it's the same. So let's send 222 to this address. Verify it very carefully because it won't uh, prompt a confirmation window. When you click send, it will, it will, it will send them. Okay, the funds have been sent. This action will take some time to complete. Okay. And that was pretty much pretty much it. And I think here it's the uh, the remaining amount that you have in uh, in your 
in your wallet after the 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 withdrawal will uh, will go through okay we can uh, we can move on to part five and this is checking your wallet directly so if you would like to check uh, the status of your wallet you don't necessarily need to come and log on each time here into wallet counter wallet.io you just need to remember your uh, your address it starts with 1gb and ends with l5x and you can access it by going through xchain.io and here you can type Koval and you select Koval C, I think it's from Koval Coin. Holders and you go all the way to the back and now you're trying to find your, your address. X. So okay, let's see the unconfirmed ones. Uh, yeah, this this is also a tip. If you have pending transactions, you can see them in the unconfirmed tab. Basically, if you click unconfirmed, you'll see the pending transaction for uh, for every every Koval uh, wallet. So as you can see, as pending, we have five hundred and two hundred and twenty-two that we. Uh, need to get back to, to the Bitrex address. And if we click on the source, we can see that right now the amount is 1000 and uh, it kind of estimates uh, the, va the value of, uh, of them. And it has two pending uh, sending uh, operations. Yeah, this is, this is pretty, much, pretty much about it. I hope this uh, tutorial was, uh, was very useful. Uh, this is how I transferred my uh, my own tokens to the to the external wallet and back. There's just one small extra part that I would like to add. So basically, the confirmation that the tokens we've sent from uh, from the external wallet are arriving in uh, in Bitrex. So if we look our, at our wallet, we see the updated Bitcoin value and the updated Koval value. This here, this animation is still uh, going on because. Uh, the withdrawal withdrawals haven't gone through all the confirmations, but the remaining amount is correct on both Bitcoin and Koval. If we look here in Bitrex, we can see the pending deposits, the one with 500 and the one with 222. And if we'll, we'll search for our, for our uh, address here in exchange.io, so right now we know we have only 278 on it. So we can go right at the end and search for an address with 278. It should be here. Yes, here we have it. It's the one with L5X, it's ours. So we can see the amount uh, and also we can see all the transactions that have gone through this wallet by looking at the sends uh, tab here. So we can see the amount we deposited and the two, two withdrawals. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much about it. Uh, as a final recommendation, please try and do this with small amounts first. Uh, see and confirm that it works okay for you. Try and send a very small amount in Koval and uh, in Bitcoin to the wallet and back and only after you you've seen that you've managed to do it successfully then start with uh, with bigger amounts